हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ दीक्षा आनंद असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग एच आई आई टी मैंगलोर एंड इन कंटिन्यूशन विद द लास्ट क्लास दैट्स ऑन मॉड्यूल थ्री हार्ड एंड कॉन्क्रीट विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पार्ट फोर ऑन द सेम टॉपिक हार्ड एंड कॉन्क्रीट एंड इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वॉट एवर द टॉपिक आई एम गोइंग टू कवर यू कैन रेफर इन द नोट्स फ्रॉम पेज नंबर थर्टी सेवन टू फोर्टी सेवन एंड हियर we will be uh, discussing uh, the topics on uh, uh, non destructive testing methods so what are the different methods non destructive testing methods so the first one that is in situ so before uh, so studying about non destructive testing methods we should know about in situ test on the concrete what do you mean by in situ in situ is nothing but in site test so in site so what are the tests directly we do it in the site we call it as in site test and non destructive testing is an easy way to detect or inspect the defects on the surface of the concrete or the structure fast techniques and need not any sort of huge calculation or waiting mostly this technique is used in specialist high risk areas such as nuclear and sea show structures gas and oil pipeline so next is what are the advantages and disadvantages limitations of ndt non destructive test so access to the hidden item see over through walls better investigation with ndt rapid accumulation of the data generally less expensive than destructive testing so here destructive testing is nothing but Uh, for example so what is the difference between destructive and non destructive for example in non destructive test uh, like the specimen will not be disturbed or it not it will not be collapsed but here in case of destructive for example if we consider a concrete cube will be applying a load on the surface area and it will be compressed and it will be uh, uh, the cubes will be wasted later after checking the strength so it is known as destructive and minim minimize the interruption of the building surface evaluation and the quality assurance and what are the disadvantages of ndt more than one test methods may be required and to find the result environmental condition may affect or distort the result construction details and building components may affect the result some condition cannot be determined with a reasonable degree of accuracy without destructive testing next is what are the different test uh, done on the hardened concrete non destructive test done on the hardened concrete so here there are uh, the several uh, test a list of several test conducted but here out of these test what is mentioned in this slide so the few test has its own importance in the construction site so the first one is rebound hammer test and uh, cork extraction pull out strength penetration resistance uh, radiography permeability test maturity test carbonation depth break of test cover meter and upv upv stands for ultra sonic pulse velocity test so out of these test rebound hammer core as extraction pull out strength penetration resistance and ultrasonic pulse velocity test will be discussing in this class which has its own importance in the construction site to determine the strength or the uh, properties of a hardened concrete next is a rebound hammer uh, test so in rebound hammer test we will be determining the compressive compressive strength of the hardened concrete you can see here the concrete uh, surface and uh, uh, hammer which is attached with the plunger it is also known as a needle and a spring just to give the movement to and fro uh, compress the needle and tubular housing rider scale and the spring at the back and a release button now what are the scope what is the scope of a uh, rammer rebound hammer method so this test method covers the determination of a rebound number of hardened concrete using a spring driven steel hammer the value stated in inch pound units are to be regarded as a standard so this standard does not support 
to address all of the safety concern if any associated with its use if the responsibility of the user of this standard to establish appropriate safety and health practices and determine the applicability of the regular regulatory limitations prior to the use next is what are the significance and the use of this method so this test method is not intended as the basis for acceptance or rejection of the concrete because of the inherent uncertainty in the estimated strength so what are the what is the test area and the interference so where it can be used so selection of the test surface concrete members to be tested shall be at least 100 mm that is 4 inch thick and fixed within the structure smaller specimen must be rigidly supported avoid areas exhibiting honeycomb scaling so it should be hard and all the pores should be filled and uh, it should be it should not be honeycombing structure or high porosity and uh, so if it is of high porosity so we know will not be ever will not be able to get the values do not compare the test results if the form material against uh, which the concrete was placed in is not similar and travel surface generally exhibit the higher rebound numbers if possible test structural the next is a uh, so here in this you can see a hammer a uh, hammer which is uh, in contact with the surface you can see a plunger and a spring is inside the uh, hammer and a scale to record the uh, reading and this hammer it should not be used in a frozen concrete it should be always on kept on the smooth form or travel surface and do not have a ground prior to testing and do not conduct test directly over reinforcing bars with cover less than 0.5 uh, inches or 20 mm so what is the procedure behind that so hold the instrument so when we hold the instrument it should be exactly perpendicular to the test surface gradually push the instrument toward the test surface until the hammer impact so how the hammer impacts due to the action of the spring after impact maintain the pressure on the instrument and if necessary depress the reading re, re, depress the rebound number on the scale to the nearest whole number and record the rebound number and take 10 readings from each test area no two impact tests shall be closer together uh, than 25 mm so when we take 10 readings average of 10 readings we should not keep it on the same place uh, the 10 reading it should not be on the same place but it should be closer uh, to the surface area but the closer in the sense it should not be closer together than 25 mm and examine the impression made on the surface after impact and if the impact crushes or breaks through the nearer surface air walls this is the calculation behind that so discard reading differing from the average of 10 reading by more than 6 units and determine the average of the remaining reading if more than two readings differ from the average by 6 units discard the entire set of reading and determine the rebound number at 10 new location within the test so next one next test is ultrasonic pulse velocity method so this test is done to assess the quality of the concrete by ultrasonic pulse velocity method as per is 133111 part 1992 so this is the is indian standard code used to uh, determine the pulse velocity the underlying principle of this test is measuring the time of travel of an ultrasonic pulse passing through the concrete being tested and comparatively a higher velocity is obtained when the concrete quality is good in terms of density uniformity homogeneity etc and the procedure to determine so how it can be determined so here in pulse velocity it has a equipment or the part known as transducers so two two transducers will be there and uh, there be there is a rule to hold the transducers to uh, find the pulse velocity according to the method and the v meter can be operated i with either internal battery external battery or ac line 
here you can see a accelerated curie so here you have a q and this is known as a transducers and trans you can see how the transducers are held so this is how like uh, even in case of human body while doing uh, while checking the pulse 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 of a human body uh, they'll be using this equipment uh, similar type and before that the gel will be rubbed over the uh, 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 surface of a body to check the pulse velocity and then the values can be determined in the same way here uh, the gel uh, grease will be applied before placing this transducers in contact with the surface and here the time of travel can be noted and the uh, total length or the distance apart can be determined uh, can be will be noted to determine the pulse velocity reference a zero bar is provided to check the instrument zero the pulse time for the bar is engraved on it and adjust the set ref control until the reference bar transit time is obtained on the instrument readout and what should be the range selection for maximum accuracy it is recommended that the 0.1 microsecond range be selected for path length up to 400 mm next what is pulse velocity having determined the most suitable test points on the material to be tested and press it hard on the surface of the material uh, the transducers and do not move the transducers while uh, reading is being taken and continue so until it becomes constant do not uh, move the transducers continue holding the transducers onto the surface of the material until the consistent reading appears because the reading usually fluctuates so until we get the consistent reading we should keep the trans transducers constant and uh, the time is recorded in microsecond and the mean value of the display reading should be taken when the unit digits hunt between the two values so next how to calculate the pulse velocity that is equal to path length divided by travel time and the separation of the transducer leads to uh, leads to advisable to prevent the two transducer transducer leads from coming into close contact with each other when the transit time measurements are being taken if this is not done the receiver let uh, might pick up unwanted signal from the transmitter and uh, interruption of the results the quality of the concrete in terms of uniformity incidence or absence of internal internal flaws cracks and segregation etc indicative of the level of workmanship employed and uh, you can see here uh, the guidelines given below which have been evolved for characterizing the quality of the concrete in structures in terms of the ultrasonic pulse velocity next after finding after determining the result so kilometer per second so it is nothing but unit of velocity and here the pulse velocity value ranges and if we get this value what will be the concrete quality so if it is 4.5 kilometer per second in the con concrete quality will be excellent 3.5 to 4.5 will be good 3 to 3.5 will be medium and below 3 it will be doubtful and it will not be hence it will not be used it will not be used or it will and method of testing so how it will be tested so there are three methods direct method indirect method and semi direct method so i'll explain you one by one in the next slide so what is direct method and indirect method and semi direct method the first one represents the direct method so here you can see a concrete block for example if you see a concrete block so these are the two opposite faces of the concrete block and if the transducers are held or in the opposite surface of the concrete block this method of finding out the velocity is known as a direct transmission and here in the second one so you can see again it is held on the two faces but it is not opposite to each other instead it is perpendicular to each other so if the transducers are held perpendicular to each other it is known as semi indirect transmission and the next one is uh, indirect transmission so if the two transducers are placed parallel to each other and uh, and on the same face it is known as uh, indirect transmission this is a penetration test 
the Windsor probe is generally considered to be best means of testing penetration and the equipment consists of the powder actuated gun or driver, hardened alloy props, loading cartridges, a depth gauge for measuring penetration of the props and other related equipment. So here penetration is a type of uh, uh, hammer test where uh, a gun is used and hardened alloy props, loaded cartridges and depth gauge for measuring the penetration of the props and other related equipment will be used and here all the dimensions are given. And the depth of penetration provides an indication of the compressive strength of the concrete. So how how much it get penetrates gives the indication of the compressive strength. The depth of penetration gives the compressive strength of the concrete. Although the calibration charts are uh, provided by the manufacturer, the instrument should be calibrated for the type of concrete. So next is what are the limitations and advantages. The prop test produces quite variable results and should not be expected to give accurate values of the concrete. And checking quality and maturity of the in-situ concrete should be potential for providing the quick means. And uh, it also provides a means of assessing the strength through development with the uh, curing. is like what is the principle behind the penetration test the principle of windsor probe is like that of rebound hammer the penetration of the probe reflects the precise compressive strength in area of concern and there is a graph provided between the penetration length and the compressive strength by which the compressive strength can be known and here you can see so it is in the same same as that of rebound hammer and uh, which penetrates into the concrete and the depth of penetration gives you the compressive strength of the concrete here a win windsor pro windsor prop and uh, it is according to a and the tool is known as astm c803 and here you can see the depth of penetration and this value gives you the uh, compressive strength of the concrete the depth of penetration the prop and you can see here how it is connected or in contact with the surface and uh, after the penetrating so the here the penetration value in terms of compressive strength for 28 days uh, 28 days compressive strength and here it is exposed prop length uh, it's like uh, the length of a needle and the gravel moss hard hardens hard Next 6.5 and the graph shows the drastic increase. So next is the pull out test. So pull out test is nothing but so here uh, we'll be doing for a uh, facility for example if you take a cylindrical cylindrical uh, specimen of a concrete and uh, a concrete can be or a steel bar can be pulled out from the steel rod can be pulled out of uh, uh, from the concrete uh, specimen uh, for to a depth of uh, 3 inches or 7.5 7.6 centimeter and it measures with a special ram the force required to pull from the concrete especially shaped uh, steel rod whose enlarged end has been cast into a concrete to a depth of 3 in inches or 7.6 centimeter and concrete is simultaneously in tension and in shear and pull out technique can thus measure quantitatively the in situ strength of the concrete when proper correlations have been made and over a wide range of strength that pull out strength have a coefficient of variation comparable to that of compressive strength. So next here you can see the pull out strength or how it can be determined and here you can see a steel rod and a concrete surface and the pull out insert pull out insert and a fracture of the surface and here you can see the graph uh, which shows the pull out force the force applied to pull the uh, rod as well as the compressive strength. You can see even in this you can see a, a cylindrical uh, mouse and a rod steel rod which is being pulled and the uh, length as well as diameter cylindrical concrete specimen and uh, what should be the diameter what is the diameter of the steel bar. And what are the limitations and advantages? Pull out test do not measure uh, 
the interior strength of the mass concrete and uh, pull out is nothing but we have to pull the concrete I mean we have to pull the steel rod from the concrete and since we are going to pull out this so will disturb the surface of the concrete and it can be considered as destructive but this comes under the non-destructive test because some minor damage we can see over the surface of the concrete and minimum pull out force is applied uh, that stops short of failure but make certain that the minimum strength has been reached this is information of distinct value in determining when forms can be removed safely next is the last one that is a core extraction and uh, while rebound hammer capo or the pull out windsor probe and ultrasonic pulse velocity test give indirect evidence of the concrete quality a more direct assessment on the strength can be made by core sampling and testing so here um, in the equipment used is rotary cutting tool with a diamond bits so once after the uh, uh, structure is ready to determine uh, the strength we have to extract after uh, after like 28 days like uh, when it reaches the maximum strength a rotary cutting tool with a diamond bits is uh, kept in contact with the surface and it is driven in this manner a cylindrical specimen is obtained usually with its end being uneven par and parallel and square and sometimes with embedded pieces of reinforcement and cores are visually described and photographed giving specific attention to the compaction and uh, you can see here in the next slide how it will be when it so this is the rotary equipment with the diamond bits which is in contact with the surface and it is driven inside and it is extracted so here in this three diagram you can see uh, how it is how it makes the shape and how the cylindrical cubes can be extracted to determine the strength of the so next is core samples can be used for the following uh, like strength and density determination depth of carbonation of the concrete <coughs> chemical analysis water gas permeability petrographic analysis and chloride permeability test the strength of a test specimen depends on its shape proportion and size the influence of high diameter that is hd and for values hd less than 1 between 1 and 2 and corrosion factor correction factor has been applied and cores with HD less than 1 yield unreliable results and uh, some standard specifies the use of 150 mm or 100 mm core. Very small diameter cores exhibit more va variability in results and uh, hence their use is generally not recommended and the dia should not be less than 3 core size beside HD ratio and uh, is a general rule adopted for fixing the core size and diameter of the core less than three times the size of the stone aggregate and increased number of cores have to be tested next is what are the factors affecting the compressive strength of the cores so ratio of the diameter of the core to the maximum size of the stone aggregate is less than three a reduction strength is reported and uh, with the 20 mm sized aggregate 50 mm dia core has been tested to give 10 percent lower result and uh, presence of uh, a tra transverse uh, steel cause a uh, 5 to 15 percent reduction in compressive strength of the core and however the presence of the steel parallel to the axis of the core is not desired so hd ratio uh, minimum 0 0.9 and uh, maximum 2 it should be and uh, age of the concrete uh, not age no age elements is recommended by the concrete society mm, but uh, little strength after 28 days uh, has to be reported whereas the others suggest that the under average condition the increase over 28 days strength is 10 percent after three months and the strength of the concrete it should be higher in stronger concretes and reduction has been reported as 15 percent for 40 mpa concrete next is drilling operation how it should be drilled the strength of the core is generally less than 
that of the standard cylinder partly as the consequences of disturbance due to very vibration during drilling operation and what should be the site condition versus standard specimen because site curing is invariably inferior to curing prescribed for the standard specimen the in situ core strength is invariably lower than the standard specimen so these are the topics what these are some of the topics uh, which has its importance in the hardened concrete to determine its properties like uh, non destructive test and as i mentioned earlier the five important test that is rammer ribbon hammer ultrasonic pulse velocity penetration pull out test and core at extraction so just give importance for the five test where um, it is in practice in the construction site and what are the factors affecting uh, these are some of the topics which are important under this video lecture so thank you for listening this is all about module 3 so just go through part 1 part 2 part 3 and part 4 of hardened concrete and uh, just recollect all the important topics what is highlighted in the uh, slide and for the more description you can refer the notes to